Hi, I'm Tony Todd, and welcome to Throwing Heat. I'm here with my two co-hosts, Dr. Dan Ratner and Rasta Buff. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications, and click that like button. Today's guest is a 2019 All-Star and one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball. Let's welcome to the show my buddy, Lucas Giolito. What's up, Lucas? How's it going, Tony? Just kicking back being black, man. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, we have a lot, we have a lot of history. Uh, you and I, we go back like hair grease. I remember watching you pitch in Little League, man. And uh, mm -hmm. what's in the, what's in, you know, just, just, just this past season, 2020, there was three guys from Chamonga Little League in Major League Baseball. You know, we had uh, uh, yourself, Scott Heineman and Tyler Heineman. What's in the water out there in Santa Monica, man? Southern California baseball, man. That's where it's happening. Um, yeah, I mean, those two guys are are awesome. I, I've known Scott and Tyler for a very long time. Uh, you know, back in the day, Scotty Heineman used to be like the big pitcher mm -hmm. in Santa Monica Little League. He was the one that threw the hardest and all that, but I eventually took over. Um, and now he's uh, playing the outfield. Tyler's catching. I think Tyler's with the Cardinals and Scott's with the Reds right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we uh, actually have some photos of you back in the day in Little League. You know, I had to make a few phone calls. And, uh, you know, look at that. Why are you not pitching in that photo? I think that's you playing shortstop in the back, right? Oh, is that Connor pitching? <laughs> that's Connor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's Connor Green, another, you know, fellow Santa Monica pro baseball player. We got a bunch of them nowadays. Mm -hmm. um he's with the orioles and yeah am i really playing shortstop there that's kind of surprising yeah no but back in the day you can hit a little bit lucas i used to watch you at the little yeah. league huh yeah i remember uh i mean hitting I, I was fine up until i was about 14 and that was uh that's when they pulled the plug on that one that was it you know, oh yeah you said, I'm, I'm done with it but yeah. was that was that because Lucas was that because you started throwing you know like a, a cannon and they were like don't let this guy hit he's he's gonna be a pitcher. Um, I think it was more just the unathlet uh, unathleticism and risk for injury to myself and others if I were to be swinging a bat. So, uh, yeah, my high school coach was like, you know what, we're gonna call it a day and just have you focus on what you're good at. I think that was a. Great decision of him. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about this photo? That's pretty cool. I see the great Dave Winfield. Oh, photo. yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, one of the travel teams I played for, I believe, man, West L.A. Wave is what we were called. And mm -hmm. uh, Dave Winfield was one of our coaches, uh, Big Dave right there, and then obviously Little Dave on the right side, on my left uh, in the photo. And yeah, I mean, we had a ton of fun, went to Cooperstown with that team. Obviously there's Connor right in front of me again. Um, Joe Corrigan. Oh man, that's fun. And yeah, I went to high school with Joe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I remember all these guys, a lot of good base, young baseball players uh, just doing the travel ball thing back when we were like 12, 13 years old. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember you just, you know, you can throw hard and like, when you came out of the womb, you're like two years old, throwing about 90. How about this photo right here? That's back in the day when you can hit that ball a little bit. Lucas. Yeah, there, there we go. Kind of driving go. it there. Yes, you are definitely driving it. <laughs> then you I remember that bat, actually, the uh, De Marini, the orange voodoo. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. That's when the aluminum bats used to have pop. Now, I think kids in high school, they might, they might as well just use wooden bats, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I it doesn't sound good coming on. Like, I'll, I'll watch college games here and there. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been a lot of uh, fanfare surrounding uh, Vanderbilt with Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker. So I've been checking out some of their starts here and there. And it's just like any time a guy squares it up with the, the new kind of uh, baseball bat, it sounds like you're hitting it with a newspaper, wet newspaper. <laughs> exactly. Like but even if, if it goes far. Mm -hmm, weird. Mm -hmm. How about this guy right here? Oh, yeah. well. Now, Tony, Tony said that this was from your time with the Nationals, but I told him that can't be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have the beard. 
When did you first? When did you? When did you get to, to be able to grow the beard? Oh man, you I got was a able nice to, beard gone. Thank you. Thank. I just. I, yeah, I just saw the barber yesterday on our off day. So nice. Yeah, I got it cleaned up. Um, man, I could start growing a beard probably when I was like fifteen, and I it really like got full, and I was able to shape it up by the time I was probably twenty. Wow. Twenty one. Yeah, that's Except, what happens when you hit right. 90 on the radar gun, you can grow a beard. That's why I can grow mine, you know. Right. And Lucas, you want to hear something funny? What do you got? I, I never shaved a day in my life. Not at all? <laughs> never yeah. shaved. Never, never right. shaved. Oh Ross can God. tell you that. Yeah, that's true. Lucas, wow. I love going down memory lane with you, but let's talk about something more recent. You know, yeah. I, you know I, I'm, uh, I, I love to talk about the past, but I want to talk about your no-hitter. And I was, you know, you actually got me out of my... My, I was in a to total depression with sports. Nothing much was on except baseball. And all of a sudden you came up in August and you threw that no hitter. And I was excited. I actually called Tony. I said, you better turn this on. He was watching already, but I called Tony. I said, your guy, Lucas is, is getting close. And Tony said, you just ruined it. You, you know, <laughs> Tony's superstitious about that stuff. And I don't know if you are, I saw you on the dugout and you were by yourself, you know, watching the game. No one was talking to you. Were you superstitious during that, during that whole no, no hitter? I mean, going to the eighth and ninth inning to tell me what was going on in your head. Yeah. It's kind of funny the way it, it all played out. Um, it started out just like I really got into the zone early. I'm feeling good. I'm getting one, two, three innings early on in the game. And then after like the fifth, sixth inning, it started to like really be on my mind. And it was really after the sixth inning when I had to get nine more outs where I was like, okay, this is very doable. Uh, really, really got to lock in here, like bring that extra focus to e each and every pitch I'm throwing and we can make this happen. Um, I felt very confident that night and to go to the superstition thing, usually I'm not very superstitious. I don't really care. Uh, it's just not something that's important to me. But it's almost like as the game went on, I got a little bit more superstitious. Every half inning, I'm sitting in the dugout. Like I'm usually in the dugout, like drinking a Red Bull, walking around, like <laughs> talking, talking with people, um, just like keeping my energy really high. But it's like after the sixth inning i was a little more quiet after the seventh inning i'm kind of just sitting there and then uh after the eighth right before going out for the ninth it was like i'm sitting there head down just trying to like take deep breaths and and we were able to get it done which was it was uh, great amazing it, it was, i mean i was so happy for you the interviews afterwards were epic it was unbelievable and yeah. you actually threw a no hitter four months before on on your video game i mean i don't think it's ever been done <laughs> against the major league baseball player tell us yeah i mean we had in during that you know covid quarantine period um early on in in 2020 uh we put together like between mlb and the pa and uh, San Diego Studios, we, we did this whole MLB The Show video game uh, tournament almost. It was called the Players League. And I represented the White Sox uh, playing mm. this video game. And I ended up going pretty far in the tournament. I did pretty well. And in one of the games, I, I threw a no-hitter with myself. <laughs> uh, but the, the caveat is that uh, it was only three inning games. So oh. I, it was just like for the sake of the entertainment value, like I really played it up like, oh, I just threw a no hitter, right? <laughs> whatever. But then I went on to do it in real life later that year, which was definitely more special. Who, 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 who ended up winning the tournament? Uh, it was Blake Snell, me versus Blake Snell in the finals. And he just waxed me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Tony actually were there when he won, when he played in the World Series. Yeah. against the Dodgers they took him out of way too early but we'll that's yeah. a whole nother conversation yeah so both of us being born and raised in Santa Monica Lucas I just want to let you know that you know the city is very proud of you and um, I had the opportunity in 2011 to actually videotape your first no hitter when you're in high school and oh, I just yeah. wanted to know your dad told me a story I just wanted to know he was actually sitting down because he never sits down at the game you know that mm -hmm. right so him and I, when the game started, I think he struck out the first batter, first or second batter. And, and I took my, I think I had a, something called a flip or something like that. So I just started videotaping. 
And then uh, your dad says, uh, are you going to shoot this whole game? I said, yeah, I think something special is going to happen today, right? <laughs> and it was just unbelievable to watch you, you know, pitch a no-hitter. Now, he told me, was that your first interview ever after you threw a no-hitter? I think it was your junior year because I interviewed you after the game. If you remember, um, I think that I had a couple mm -hmm. with uh, Sonheimer. Do you know you know Eric Sonheimer? Eric Sonheimer, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, my first ever interview mm -hmm. was with Eric Sonheimer, like maybe my sophomore year of high school. Oh, nice. That was my okay. junior year. You were definitely like within the first five i ever yeah. did well 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 throwing a no hitter i was the first guy to interview after that no hitter yes absolutely okay. wait is, yeah that was this... post game i still had ice on my shoulder oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this picture is from post game or is this from a different one no that's after the game no I'm that's after about. that's after that playoff game yeah oh my god well, now I want to ask you this, Lucas, because you, you have this magical thing that happened as far as I, I'm concerned, which is your, your high school pitching coach is now your pitching coach with the White Sox. Do mm -hmm. I have that correct? Oh, How yeah. did that happen? Oh, man. So it happened because he's a professional pitching coach. Yes, he is. Um, so he, Ethan, uh, he played baseball himself. He played professionally. Um Injuries kind of ended his career a little earlier than he would have liked. Got into coaching, uh, started at my high school, Harvard Westlake. Did a wonderful job with me, Max Fried, and Jack Flaherty. Uh, soon after we left, he got into pro ball, started working his way up the ladder in, in pro ball pitching coaching, and you know had a number of jobs within different. Like I think he worked for like three different organizations. He was a pitching coordinator at one point. Um, his first big league opportunity was with the Giants in 2020. He was the, their assistant pitching coach at the big league level, uniform pitching coach, and did a great job with those guys uh, in that role. And we ended up have having our pitching coach job open up. And did you my, make a phone call and just say, "I need that guy. That's my guy." Uh. I didn't not really like that. I basically okay. I had already been t talking to the organization for like two or three years about how good he was at his job and that he'd be very helpful to us. And so they were very well aware when, you know, our pitching coach job became available that he was on the list and everything like that to get interviewed. Um, I had a couple conversations with our front office about it, but at the same time, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to let Ethan, you know, earn his way. Um, I'm not trying to like, you know, be over here and like pull in special favors that would like kind of be weird putting pressure, you know, on myself or like a hire or something like that. And so sure enough, like Ethan got the interview, absolutely killed the interview and he ended up being the uh, best option for us. And you can kind of see the, the results showing here early. We have the best pitching staff in baseball, mm -hmm. I believe. You really right do. Now. And you have these young guns now too. Dylan, Dylan's pitching great. Mm -hmm. And and you got Michael. I mean, all these guys are coming together. Terrific. I mean, how, how do you get along with Tony La Russa? There's a 50 year gap between you and Tony. That's a big age difference. And I knew Tony oh, yeah. back when he was the coach for the A's actually. And I actually gave money to his animal rescue stuff that he does. Arf, um, yeah. I, I do. I, I'm very. I give money towards that. But I mean, do you guys get along? I mean, does he have any wisdom he, he handed down to you that you didn't know? I mean, what's he like to as your manager? Oh yeah, I mean, it, for me, I really enjoy um, the stories. The uh, like you said, the wisdom. He's been around baseball for a long, long time. He probably has more experience in baseball than anyone I've ever met. Uh, and, you know, he's he's constantly trying to find ways to kind of pass that on to us younger players. Um, I think that our staff as a whole is really, really great. Like, yes, Tony is older. Um, he has a ton of experience, ton of wisdom, but we also have coaches around him that are on the younger side or you know we have um you know spanish-speaking coach coaches 
uh it's like a really really good mix young old um more experienced less experienced um kind of same with our with our uh team as well the players you know yeah. we have veteran guys we have young 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 players we have guys like me kind of in the middle um guys from you know all sorts of different countries. I mean, and- yeah, I mean, Cuba's like, uh, you guys have like, how many Cubans are on your team? I mean, it's like your whole team's Cuban. Oh, man. It's unbelievable. Uh, Lucas yeah, is not one, Cuban. Two... I'm pretty sure. No, I'm I'm half Italian. <laughs> I can tell, yeah. <laughs> <It's like laughs> by the last name. Don't Lucas. piss him off, you guys. Do not piss him off. Yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, not, but I mean, the, the, I mean, having that Cuban influence, I mean, it, it's a country that I always wanted to visit. I never been there. Um, they opened it up, but I mean, uh, do you speak Spanish? Do you communicate with these guys? Well, mm, I mean, how, I wish, the whole... oh, you, I well. wish, I wish, I wish. Yeah, yeah. I, I took Spanish in high school and you know, I'm we that, all did. <laughs> I'm that, yeah, I'm that like exact normal case of, <laughs> oh, I took three years of Spanish in high school and now it's all gone. None See, of the, the, the White Sox just need <laughs> to bring in your high school Spanish teacher. <laughs> and then everything will be fine. I I, I, I want to ask you something about Chicago. It's my favorite cities for food. I love Chicago and the food. Mm. Portillo's, what's your order at Portillo's? Go. Ooh, oh, man. I haven't been to Portillo's in a little bit. Uh, I would say I would get the uh, Italian beef. Okay. um, With hot peppers for sure. Okay. Some French fries. With cheese? uh oh they do just... they do do the cheese fries there I, I, yeah. i've been there many times with yeah this. I'm not i'd joking. do the cheese i would do the cheese fries and i would probably do like a chocolate malt or something i really uh, like the chocolate wow. cake shake huh so you go um, you go wash it down you go wash it down with a chocolate with a chocolate malt Love chocolate that. cake shake they have tony it's it's the it's the most sugar i've ever had in my life oh the chocolate cake shake you know i tried it one time i was oh. like oh my god <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get through this thing right that was crazy now lucas yeah. i recently witnessed your national commercial are you coming after my job what's going on here i loved it i loved it <laughs> yeah it was cool it was cool you know the funniest thing about that is is you know an eight nine hour mm-hmm. uh work day turns into like a one minute piece <laughs> right and a lot of waiting around as well right yeah yeah a lot of hanging out uh i had a great time though you know we had good spread uh mm-hmm. no complaints no complaints my acting wasn't too terrible no you did so, a great job i think yeah, you did a i appreciate great job, it man. Thank you, Tony. It means a lot coming from you. Oh, come on. And and another thing is I really appreciate your mom's artwork, man. I mm-hmm. remember a few years ago, she had uh, made some artwork for a friend of mine and he still has it hanging in his office. It's unbelievable. And yeah, she still she started at a young age doing that or when did she start doing it? Yeah, she, I mean, she was an artist from like, you know, when she was born on in many different capacities. Obviously, the acting side uh, was like the highlight for a long time. But no, even when she was in high school, she d- was doing like oil painting and stuff mm-hmm, and then kind of mm-hmm. like put it on the back burner when she got into acting. But then, um, yeah, I mean, more recently within the last like ooh, probably eight, ten years, She's really been honing her craft, uh, oil painting on canvas. Um, right. You can see that image right there is mm-hmm. one of her more uh, recognizable like works, I guess. The uh, hat collection. Yes. Those are all uh, at, in the Dodger Stadium gallery. But yeah, I mean, she was just telling me a couple of days ago, I was on the phone with her for Mother's Day. And she was telling me, oh, I just got commissioned by another baseball player to do something for his wife or, that, or something like that. that. That's so. awesome. That's all because her work is, I mean, her work is stunning. And, uh, you know, when you, when you talk to her, please give her my best. Yeah, See, this, absolutely. This is one of the great things about this show, Lucas, is we get really personal. We send Tony to know you when you were like 14 years old. <laughs> and then he knows all that. And meanwhile, I have you on my fantasy baseball team. I just wanted to say it. It's a keeper league too, so I'm planning to keep you for a long time. Just wanted you to know I have you have your back on that. All right, cool. So, so Lucas, you know, we want to go out like this. I mean, if there's anything that you can advise the younger kids coming up about trying to make it either in college or professional baseball, what advice would you give them? Ooh, oh, man. So what really helped me uh, when I was struggling was don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was, 
you know, kind of in, in a rut career wise, not pitching well. Um, my confidence was super down. Uh, I really, in order to like make things be better, I had to really just kind of exit that comfort zone. Uh, I had to try new things. I had to be willing to like work not harder, but differently, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And so that's always my advice is like, don't be afraid. Like, you know, if you're stuck, if you feel stuck, you feel like you're not moving in the right way. Like just go do something random, do something weird. Like just kind of like reset your brain and uh, put yourself in in a good space to start to climb that ladder. Yeah, I tell kids just have no fear of failure. And uh, oh yeah, uh, I want to thank you for being our guest on Throwing Heat. We actually had someone who can actually throw heat on our show, <laughs> and uh, I just want to thank you for coming on, man. I, you know, I, you know, I've been a fan since you were born, and I followed your career, and you know, I, you know, I love you like a stepfather, and uh, just continue success, man, and you know, wish you all the best. Oh, I really appreciate it, Tony. Yeah, thank you guys. Before yeah. you run, Lucas, I need to get your World Series prediction. I just gotta get it. <laughs> World Series <laughs> prediction. Oh, let me let me think real quick. Well, you know one team, Chicago White Sox for sure. Uh, it's gonna be the Sox and the. Oh, let me throw out. Let me go Cardinals. Wow. Oh, Sox, one team Cardinals. I can't stand. Oh, okay. Lucas, no. <laughs> well, All right. I'm well, sorry. Well, Tony brought us yeah. in for a nice, good landing, and I had to get that in. I really yeah, I loved it. <laughs> well, thank Lucas, you. Uh, thanks Lucas, for coming on. Have, yeah.